we've all heard the news. The average 30-year mortgage in the United States has just surpassed 7.6%. This makes it the highest level since December 1st, 2000. From this perspective, the situation has become dire. Everyone is now wondering how it's possible that this market remains stable. What started as an annoyance has now expanded into one of the worst asset bubbles in financial history. The story of how we got here is one that explains the future and raises serious red flags regarding the future state of this unstable economy. The housing crash that's coming will be the worst we have ever experienced. And to show you why, let's take a step back into history and look at clear evidence that what is happening today is far from normal. You see, when people show you a chart like this, they often overlook the all-important aspect of inflation over a 40 or 50 year period. The power of inflation is frequently underestimated. For instance, if someone says they bought a house in 2000 for $200,000, that doesn't necessarily make it a good deal because $200,000 in the year 2000 is worth about $356,000 in today's dollars. Therefore, while on paper this person may appear to have gained value on their home, it's not a real gain. To accurately measure a bubble, we need to adjust for inflation and showcase how much home prices have truly increased. This can be achieved through the inflation-adjusted Case-Shiller Index, which provides real home prices without the illusion caused by the falling dollar. As you can see now, we have surpassed the last bubble which was considered monumental in terms of U.S. history. In fact, based on the pioneering research of Robert J. Schiller and Carly Case, we have relatively comprehensive data on housing prices dating back to 1889. And from this data, it becomes evident that 2008 was an anomaly. The price of a home reached a level that was previously believed to be unattainable. Although there has been a trend of growing real prices over the past 100 years, it is clear that today's bubble is worse than what we experienced in 2008. Since about 2012, we have left all sense of normality behind. So what makes me think that we'll end up back here? Well, there is a point in this argument where the bulls lose their ability to argue against a crash. It begins with a bit of history. It wasn't particularly surprising to see the 2008 bubble start to develop after the year 2000. The reason for this was interest rates. Throughout history, interest rates were high when compared to today's standards. Over the past 30 years, we have witnessed a gradual decline in rates. This set the stage for the formation and collapse of the 2008 bubble. But that wasn't the lesson learned. After the 2008 bubble, the Fed continued to suppress rates to new records, pushing them down to 2.6% at some point. As a result, a new bubble started from late 2011 and continues until today. The real price of a home, adjusted for inflation, rose by 66%. Excluding the rise in 2008, this country has never witnessed such rapid acceleration. And each time it has occurred, we have observed a crash that brings this phenomenon more in line with historical averages. Now, if you take a look at this chart and think to yourself, well, that simply isn't enough for me. There's another body of evidence that, in my opinion, serves as the nail in the coffin. It essentially proves that something must give in the market. Now, before I reveal this to you, please take a moment to support the channel by liking and subscribing. Each like greatly helps the channel, and I would highly appreciate it if you took just two seconds to press that button. Now, going back to what I was saying, you see, while the housing market is heavily impacted by interest rates, we know that most buyers and investors are purchasing using some form of loan, typically the 30-year fixed mortgage. Without delving too deeply into this topic, we know that the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is essentially derived from the 10-year treasury. Essentially, this financial instrument determines what mortgage rates will be. So now the question is, what does this have to do with my home, and its value? Well, in order to answer this and ultimately settle things once and for all, we need to grasp a bit of context. Imagine a 10-year treasury note as a special type of paper that the government uses to borrow money. And they do this in a rather simple manner. 
They take your cash with a promise that they'll give it back to you after 10 years with a small amount of interest. Currently, they're paying an interest rate of 4.5%, but here's where it gets interesting. There is also a two-year treasury note, and if you take a look at it, the interest rate they're paying is 5.02%. This means that the government is willing to pay you a higher interest rate to borrow your money for two years, rather than 10 years. Typically, it's expected to be the opposite, meaning that the longer the government borrows, the higher the rate should be. When the rates are inverted like this, you get something called an inverted yield curve. Long story short, inverted yield curves are the most obvious signal for a recession. When a situation like this happens, the chances of a recession are nearly 100%. If you look at this chart going back to the late 70s, every single time the line went below zero, which signals an inversion, what followed was a recession. This was true in the early 80s, early 90s, early 2000s, 2008, 2020, and now. If you zoom in, you can see the problem. This chart is from 2022, so it doesn't show the new developments, but essentially, we have gone even deeper into the inversion and are now starting to come back up. Now you might think, well, we're coming back up, which is good news. Maybe we've managed to avoid the storm. But this couldn't be further from the truth. The worst, and really when the recession typically starts, is after the inversion is complete and the line moves past zero into positive territory. Look at 2008. It was years after the inversion that the real pain began. Right now we have a situation that's extremely troubling. The Fed is pushing rates to the brim but the bond market is sort of calling their bluff. And this is really my final point when it comes to a future crash. You see, for example, the 30-year yield is essentially the same as the 10-year yield. This means that investors are starting to think that there will be some serious inflation in the future. We know this because every rational person would buy a 30-year treasury if their rate was attractive but it's not because there is so much uncertainty regarding the next few years. This is why buying the 10-year for the same yield is possible. Because in order for the 10-year to sell, you need incentive. And the incentive is a rate that's absurd when compared to the 30-year. Now, if you don't understand this part, it doesn't matter. But essentially, investors will believe that inflation will continue to be high based on these treasury curves. And if that is true, you have to think if the Fed is raising rates to beat this inflation, eventually to have inflation pop off again, you need the Fed to capitulate. And in order for that to happen, you need a crisis. The crisis is right here in our face. The complete destruction of the housing market via this apparatus right here. Rates are like gravity, and right now we are entering unknown territory. When something breaks, it will bring down this massive house of cards that's been building since 2012. And the bubble that we used to know as the biggest will look like nothing compared to this. Now, before we wrap things up, let's see how this housing market crash will affect homeowners and investors. It's not just about higher interest rates and potential economic slumps. It's a big deal for regular folks and smart real estate investors. For homeowners, when interest rates go up, those with adjustable rate mortgages or folks looking to refinance might struggle with higher monthly mortgage payments. This could lead to more foreclosures and a bunch of homes on the market at rock bottom prices. As for investors, especially those who bought properties thinking they'd keep going up in value, they'll face new challenges as prices drop. They might end up with properties worth less than what they owe and less rental income. Thanks for watching. As always, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it.